And so welcome uh, to the release of the World Meteorological Organization launch of the Greenhouse Gas Bulletin. This is an annual publication which we release every year ahead of the UN climate change um, talks, uh, which we are doing this year. Um, just a couple of logistics. Uh, we've sent you press releases in, in all official UN languages, so English, French, Spanish, Chinese, Russian, and Arabic. Um, if this press conference will be in English, if you need follow-up interviews, we can accommodate them in Russian with Dr. Tarasova. And then I also have an expert, an atmospheric a scientist uh, who, can, uh, who can give interviews in French and Spanish. Um, so without any further ado, I will pass you over to the World Meteorological Sec Organization Secretary General, uh, Professor Petri Talas. Thank you. So good Monday morning for, for everybody and from WMO's side, we have organized you sunshine uh, despite of a uh, little bit alarming report that we will soon soon release. Uh, so we have we are publishing three reports on annual basis. Uh, uh, we have a tra had a tradition to publish uh, status of greenhouse gases uh, report uh, just before the COP uh, meetings. And that's what we are doing today. And, and the forthcoming Sunday, we will publish uh, a status of climate report where we, where we are telling what, what, has happened, what we have observed in meteorological parameters and, and, and in the real real atmosphere. But today we are talking about, uh, about greenhouse gases and, uh, and, and, and uh, we have again broken records in, in main three greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, uh, methane and, and nitrous uh, oxide. And, uh, and, and this negative trend that we have been observing already for, for decades has continued also, also this year and, uh, and, and we saw a drop of, uh, of uh, carbon dioxide emissions uh, last year by 5.6% uh, because of the COVID uh, lockdowns. Uh, but despite of that, uh, the carbon dioxide concentration has continued to grow by 2.5 ppm. And so has, so has uh, been the case for methane and uh, nitrous uh, oxide. And, and, and it's, it's clear from science that uh, these uh, concentrations of greenhouse gases, they are driving uh, climate change. And, uh, and, uh, and, and if we are able to uh, mitigate uh, those emissions, uh, we could uh, phase out the negative trend in climate uh, around 2060s. So that's, that's our aim. But we have also some, some uh, parameters uh, and some uh, features uh, that will continue for even hundreds of years, uh, and that means the melting of uh, snow and ice and melting of uh, glaciers and, uh, and related sea, sea level rise. So we have already reached such a high concentration of uh, carbon dioxide that the problem doesn't go away fairly, fairly soon. And, uh, and, 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 and we have seen uh, during the past 30 years uh, an increase uh, of uh, long-lived uh, gases uh, by 47% uh, and the warming effect of, of those gases by 47% and, uh, and carbon dioxide has uh, contributed 80% of, uh, of that, uh, that problem. And, uh, and, and we have also estimated what has happened since uh, 1750 before, before uh, man, male, uh, male, uh, man, mankind emissions uh, were having impact on atmosphere and we have seen 150 percent uh, increase of carbon dioxide uh, concentration that we have reached now 413.2 ppm and we, we broke uh, critical level uh, 400 ppm already in 2015 and uh, and, and and this uh, this as i said that uh, this increase continues and methane is now 262 percent uh, higher than in the in the 1750s and uh, and, and and there has been uh, growth uh, uh, from uh, 2019 to 2020 and, uh, and 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 this was higher than the previous uh, years uh, growth uh, rate and and for methane we have both uh, anthropogenic and, and natural sources and the third uh, greenhouse gas that we are dealing with uh, today 
is nitrous oxide, which is also a powerful greenhouse gas. It is now 123% uh, higher than it used to be in 1750s. And last time when we saw uh, such high concentrations of uh, carbon dioxide, it was uh, around three to five million years from now. And, and then there, there was an estimate that the temperatures were two to four degrees higher than today. And the sea level was uh, 20, 10 to 20 meters uh, higher than today. So this is demonstrating that already this current uh, level of uh, carbon, carbon dioxide uh, is, uh, is too high. And then about carbon sinks, uh, it's, in, it's important to understand what is the, what is the uh, balance of carbon, so how much we are emitting them, uh, carbon dioxide, and how much it's taken by oceans and, uh, and, uh, and land ecosystems, especially, especially forests. Uh, and about half of the emitted uh, carbon is uh, taken by oceans and uh, ec ecosystems. But it's, it's not uh, automatic that this uh, strength of the sinks uh, will continue at the same, same rate. Uh, and, uh, and, and we have already seen uh, some alarming uh, indications that, for example, the Amazonian uh, uh, rainforest uh, ecosystem, which used to be a major sink of, uh, of carbon, has become now a source of, uh, of carbon, which is alarming. And this is uh, related to deforestation in the area and also uh, changes in the in 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 local climate uh, because of this deforestation and also higher temperatures which uh, are favoring favoring evaporation and it's not automatic that this ocean sink will remain as high as uh, it has been so far and uh, because of the of the warmer seawater is not able to absorb as much uh, carbon dioxide as uh, as it used to be uh, in in the past we are now heading towards COP26, and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and that's going to be a very important meeting, and, and we are expecting to, to, to get more commitments from countries to reduce their emissions. So far, so far we have heard uh, lots of political support for, uh, uh, for, for enhanced uh, ambition of mitigation, but the concrete uh, pledges have still been missing, and at the moment we are heading towards uh, 2.5 to 3 degrees warming rather than 1.5 to 2 degrees and uh, and these numbers don't sound very very big and the difference doesn't uh, sound very big but it it has been clearly demonstrated that uh, for the for the welfare of the mankind and uh, biosphere 1.5 would be the most uh, desired uh, outcome and we have to start uh, uh, dealing with the emissions already during this uh, uh, this decade we cannot wait uh, Otherwise, we will lose uh, lose the Paris uh, Paris targets, and, uh, and 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 we would uh, suffer for 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 the coming hundreds or even thousands of years uh, because of a uh, high level of carbon dioxide, uh, which is the main most important uh, part of that. And we have all the technical means to to convert our energy systems, uh, transport systems, and most of the industry systems uh, to become uh, climate friendly. And, and also we have the financial resources to, to reach that, uh, but so far the progress has been too, too slow. And one could compare this COVID-19 uh, impacts on human beings and, 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 the, and the impacts of uh, successful mitigation. Uh, with the successful mitigation, we would need only minor changes in our everyday life, uh, and, and we could also afford uh, these, uh, these changes. And besides mitigation, it's important to pay attention to adaptation. Uh, we have to adapt to climate change because this negative trend uh, in, in weather will continue for the coming decades anyhow, and some parameters like uh, melting of glaciers and sea level rise will continue for hundreds of years. And that's why we have to also adapt to this change and, uh, and to avoid uh, both human losses and economic losses related to climate, climate change. So this is this was in a nutshell the contents of the of, of the report and uh, now I could show you I could show you some slides uh, to prove that uh, what I said uh, can can be also illustrated in in, in meteorological terms. Could I get the slides up, please? So 
So we are just releasing this, uh, this uh, WMO Greenhouse Gas 2020 report. And this first slide is uh, demonstrating what has happened in, 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 the, in the past. Uh, we have some information on, on, on variability of uh, both uh, carbon dioxide concentration and uh, temperature in, in the scale of uh, tens of millions of years. And, uh, and then we have uh, some ice core uh, information that we can, we can drill and, and then we can go back 800,000 years uh, from now. And then we have measurements uh, uh, for the past uh, 150 years, 170 years uh, from, from real atmosphere. And, uh, and then we have scenarios what may happen, happen in the future. And, and it, was, it has been shown that uh, we, have, we have seen uh, uh, more than 10 degrees warmer temperatures uh, uh, during the past when, when, the, when the carbon dioxide concentration was about five times higher than today and, and uh, when, when most of the fossil, fossil uh, material was uh, in the form of carbon dioxide in atmosphere. And then three million years ago, uh, as, as I said, uh, uh, we had uh, uh, similar concentration that we are having today, and, and then the temperatures were two to four degrees uh, warmer than today. And um, and and uh, at the moment uh, we are in a position that we can we can make a choice what kind of future we would like to see from from now on. And if we continue using the fossil uh, uh, resources uh, in an unlimited way, uh, we could reach. Uh, uh, about uh, four degrees warming by the end of this uh, this century, and uh, and if we are successful with uh, 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 with the mitigation, we could even even limit uh, the warming uh, to to comfortable 1.5 degrees uh, level. Can I get the next one? And if we if we uh, continue emitting uh, the previous one, please. If we continue emitting as we, we have been doing so far. By 2300, uh, we could reach uh, some similar situation that we had uh, had uh, millions of years uh, ago, which for, wouldn't be very healthy for the for, for, for us as human beings and and nor for the for the biosphere. And uh, and and there's still a chance to to to, to limit this uh, to to healthy healthy levels. Next, please. And uh, this uh, here is here is a summary of the of the report the contents. Uh, uh, we we have uh, almost 150 percent more carbon dioxide uh, today than we had in 1750s, and even last year with the lock lockdowns, uh, we saw this 2.5 ppm increase in the in the carbon dioxide uh, concentrations, uh, 11 ppm concentration in methane and uh, 1.2 ppb in nitrous uh, oxide. And one should also keep in mind the, uh, the lifetimes of these gases. Uh, carbon dioxide is, is very slowly removed from the system, mostly as a sedimenta sedimentation to the, the, to the ocean uh, uh, bedrocks. And uh, whereas uh, the lifetime of, uh, of methane is 11 years, so that's basically a fairly short-lived gas. And, and uh, the lifetime of, of nitrous oxides is uh, a bit more than 100 uh, years. So that's also a long-term challenge, but uh, out of those, most important one is, uh, is carbon dioxide. Next, please. And here you can see uh, what, what good kind of warming impact uh, these gases have had uh, so far, and uh, about two thirds uh, is caused by carbon dioxide, about one sixth uh, caused by methane, and then we have nitrous oxide and, and also some ozone depleting gases. Next, please. And carbon dioxide, you can see this uh, time series here uh, for the past uh, decades. Uh, there's a steady, steady increase, and even this uh, rate of uh, increase, uh, there's a trend. So, so we have been emitting more and more, and uh, and and one one should uh, consider carbon dioxide as a cumulative uh, gas. So, so since the uh, the sinks are so slow, uh, so so. Uh, the more we use fossil energy, the more we will have uh, carbon dioxide in the real, real atmosphere. Next, please. And in case of methane, we have also seen seen an increase. Uh, uh, there was a plateau in the in, in the uh, uh, emission growth uh, uh, twenty years ago, but uh, but since then we have we have also seen a steady increase in the 
in the in, in the in the in, in the in the uh, growth uh, growth rates. Next, please. Nitrous oxide uh, that's coming from uh, from both natural sources, but uh, also from agriculture, and uh, and it's estimated that uh, human impact is about seventy percent of those uh, those emissions, and uh, and and this is not the most important gas, but but again, it's one of the negative uh, messages from from this report. Next, next please. And we uh, everything is based on our observations. We have. Uh, we have stations worldwide. Uh, we have fairly dense network of stations in Europe and uh, North America, but we have global coverage of those uh, stations. And, and then we have also aircraft and uh, ship measurements from the from the ocean ocean areas. Next, please. And then we have also other gases. Uh, here we have some uh, ozone depleting uh, 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 chlorine and, and bromine. Gases and uh, and they are also having impact on as as, as as greenhouse gases, but they are they are mostly dealing with uh, ozone depletion. And uh, the good news is that we have been able to see a slight uh, decrease of the of the CFC uh, 12 and 11 concentrations, uh, and uh, this this is supposed to lead to healing of the ozone layer uh, later this uh, this century. But it's also important to pay attention to those. Uh, those emissions. Next, please. And as I already said, uh, one of the striking uh, messages from from our report is that uh, uh, that uh, Amazonia region, which used to be a sink of uh, of carbon, has has become a, a net source of uh, of car carbon dioxide, and uh, and that's that's because of uh, deforestation. It's because of uh, changes of the global uh, local climate. Uh, Especially, uh, we have less humidity there, and re less rainfall, and also uh, climate change has been boosting, boosting this with higher evaporation, and uh, and, and that's why one of the most important uh, sinks of uh, carbon uh, when it comes to terrestrial areas uh, has become a source of uh, carbon dioxide. And that's that's bad news. Next, please. So that's all from from my side, and uh, and now I'm open for questions or comments. Thank you, Professor Tallis. Um, sorry, it was very uh, remiss of me. I didn't introduce our second uh, guest on the podium, uh, Dr. Oksana Tarasova, who's chief of our atmospheric and environment research branch. Uh, Dr. Tarasova, do you want to add anything uh, before we go to questions? No? Okay. All right. So um, if uh, we'll go to questions now. And apologies, we can't be physically with you in the in the room, uh, but uh, hopefully uh, uh, you get just as good service from us uh, virtually. Um, so, uh, Catherine uh, Fianca, uh, is the first question, please. Yes. Uh, good morning uh, to all. Catherine Fianca Bokonga for France 24 uh, French program. Um, you mentioned um, the importance the important role of the tropical region. Um, in the global carbon balance. I would like you to elaborate a bit about the second largest rainforest, meaning um, the Congo's one, um, and um, how Africa and the Congo's basin is reacting. I suppose it's like the Amazon. Thank you. Uh, uh, our uh, colleagues at the, at the uh, FAO have been estimating what's happening to the to the forest coverage uh, worldwide, and uh, they have been able to demonstrate that we have two two regions worldwide uh, where we have seen loss of uh, uh, of forest cover coverage, and, and and those are South America and uh, and Africa. And and in Africa, we are also talking about uh, rainforests, and uh, and Congo is one of those. In Asia, uh, we have seen a net. Uh, Net a slight net increase of the forest coverage, uh, but there are also also areas where we have seen negative uh, development, like uh, like in Indonesia. So so this is uh, this is uh, something that we we know. And, and in in the in the boreal forest zone, we have seen an increase of uh, of net sink of, uh, of carbon uh, thanks to uh, better uh, tre treatment of the of the forest areas. And 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 uh, the boreal forests are also renewable. Which is uh, not not always the case in rainforest uh, ecosystems. Uh, 
Um, I would like to I would like to add to the uh, to to what uh, Professor Talas said. Actually, for us to understand very well how the forests are working, we need to perform quite comprehensive measurements. And as you know, um, in Africa, we've been uh, negotiating for the extension of the observational network, and we are still not there. I'll just give you another example, uh, which is presented on the bulletin, and that is related to the uh, to the New Zealand, where the traditional inventory, which is uh, uh, using the statistics of the forest, like the uh, the land area covered by the forest and the emission factors, demonstrate no changes in the um, uptake of the forest. Uh, but uh, the measurements which were performed by our colleagues in New Zealand at three stations have demonstrated that actually the uptake of carbon dioxide by the forest in New Zealand is much larger than what you see in the inventory. Moreover, there is a substantial variability in what forest can do from one year to the other and are depending on the our temperature and precipitation condition in a particular year. Uh, we can see uh, larger or the smaller uptake. And the interesting case um, in New Zealand was that the uptake of the forest was much larger where they had the indigenous forest in comparison with the fast growing species which were artificially introduced to New Zealand. So when we are talking about the forest uptakes, this is a largely big unknown and uh, taking forest into consideration in climate mitigation, we need to be quite careful because we need to assess the situation on the ground and not just bluntly rely on the inventories. Thank you. Uh, Catherine, I still see your hand up. Is that a follow-up or is that an old hand? No, it's a follow-up. Okay, uh, that's so, the follow-up, yeah. Okay. Yeah, a, a quick one. Um, the first thing I would like to know is, um, as um, Amazon and Congo uh, are absorbing a high level of CO2 of carbon. Uh, don't you think that the rest of the world, the rest of the states should have um, very dynamic and effective measures in order to help those countries and regions? That's number one. And the second one is that, Madam, you just mentioned, if I'm not mistaken, that you are negotiating for the extension of observation in Africa. What's the problem? Why isn't it possible? What's the obstacle? Thank you. Okay, so if I if, if I start uh, uh, first, I would like to say that uh, there may be some uh, unrealistic expe expectations uh, by countries how much we can we can deal with uh, the sink of, uh, of carbon to the forests. Uh, uh, there are more than 80 countries uh, which have indicated as part of their Paris pledges that they will they will handle part of their carbon budgets at national level by enhancing the carbon sink. And and if if you sum up uh, all of those uh, pledges, uh, one could say that this is unrealistic. It, and this is again demonstrating that we have to we have to deal with uh, use of fossil fossil energy to be successful in in climate uh, climate mitigation. But this measurement uh, issue, perhaps Oksana could say something more about that. Yeah, the, uh, uh, thank you for the question. And uh, well, basically there, there are no obstacles in a sense that are, uh, you can make measurements there, but we are struggling with our lacking capacity and the in, in a sense that the instrumentation which we need to install, it's it's rather complicated and we need to do quite a lot of capacity development and also the investments which are coming in the observational infrastructure are often not very much supported by the our developing, developing partners due to the fact that these infrastructures seem to fail quite a lot. As I said, it's not it's not a simple, easy measurements, and it requires quite a lot of capacity. We are working on that. Uh, in particular, we are collaborating with their integrated carbon observing system, which is the research infrastructure in Europe, which tries to help and establish the sites in the critical part of Africa. Um, but that is moving very slowly. Thank you. Um, Jamie Keaton from Associated Press. 
Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, hi, Claire. Thank you. Um, this question is for uh, for Dr. Tarasova, I think. Um, you mentioned, um, Professor Talas, that uh, one of the striking messages from this report was how the Amazon has gone from being a carbon sink to a net producer of carbon. Could you tell us um, what the at what point that was that m moment was crossed? And um, and if this is new information on your end, sorry about that, but it's uh, I'm trying to find out how really new that is. I mean, obviously you're talking about something that happened last year. So is is that brand new, or have we heard that from other organizations yet? Thank you. Um, this is this is a new information, and uh, it is not coming from any other sources. It's the it's information which the members working with the Global Atmosphere Watch program provided. And to see where you have the, the turning point, you need quite quite long measurement data set. So what we presented in, in the bulletin is our about nine years uh, record. And we looked at the at the fluxes from the particular part of the Amazonian basin. Our, it, 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 is, it is difficult to say like, which moment precisely? We know that the part of the Amazonian basin, which is uh, turning into the carbon sink, are had 27% of deforestation, and um, it is it is it is a slow onset process. Are uh, when when you still kind of are within the uncertainty range, but uh, currently it is more on a positive side. Jamie, do you have your follow-up? I see your hand is still up. Yes, I do. Um, if I could just um, ask that, I mean, obviously we're heading into COP26, as you as you mentioned, uh, Professor Talas. What is the message um, given that you know a, a lot of the world had been uh, counting on the Amazon to be a carbon sink, and now it's heading in the opposite direction? What is the message for both uh, officials, governments, policymakers in the Amazon region, and for the rest of the world, based on what you've just um, explained? Thank you. Firstly, uh, one should keep in mind that 86% uh, of the carbon pro problem is related to use of fossil, fossil energy. 14% uh, is related to deforestation, especially in, in, in those rainforest uh, areas. And, uh, and, and, and this, uh, this uh, net uh, emission coming from such area, that's, that's making the situation even, even worse. Uh, to be successful in, in, in climate mitigation, we should uh, enhance the sinks uh, during the latter half of this century to reach this 1.5 degrees uh, and, uh, and and even to reach two degrees and uh, and and these are bad news uh, so that the sink uh, has become a source and uh, and and that's that's really opposite uh, uh, what we should what, what should happen I would like to add to what Professor Tala said and uh, are just to reemphasize the point that he made, we need to mitigate emissions. There is no way around it. We need to reduce emissions as fast as possible. When countries are taking commitments to be carbon neutral, um, atmosphere gives us a very clear signal that our commitments should be converted into something which we can see in the atmosphere. If we don't see our, let's say, at least the decreasing growth rate of the major greenhouse gases, uh, we cannot actually declare the success in climate agenda. And um, we are making measurements and we are providing objective information on what is going on in the atmosphere. So commitments should be followed by the actions and then with our very precise observation and the increasing atmospheric observational network, we can confirm if we are successful or not. We can use this information based on observation to target our mitigation action. We developed a program which is called Integrated Global Greenhouse Gas Information System, which actually is dedicated particularly to the use of the atmospheric observation close to the source area to target the most effective mitigation measures. We are directly with the measurements, we can confirm the practices which do work and which do not work. Thank you. Uh, Bianca Rothier from uh, Global Television. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm a journalist. I'm correspondent for Globo TV, which is the largest network in Brazil. 
And I would, I would like to insist in the point of the Amazon forest, uh, Professor Talas, um, in this context and just ahead of the COP26, if you could send uh, President Bolsonaro a message, which message would be, what could he do to avoid this um, situation? Thanks a lot. Yeah, of course, as United Nations, we are not advising individual governments, uh, but uh, one has to think of uh, distinguish between short-term economic benefits and, uh, and long-term uh, economic losses. And, uh, and the long-term uh, vision is that if, if this uh, trend uh, continues, it would be bad for the, for the economy of, of Brazil as well. So the loss of uh, this ecosystem would be also loss, uh, loss for the for the country and, and there's a risk that uh, he would boost the climate change in in Brazil. One of the risks that we are we are following is what's going to happen to the rainfall amounts uh, in Amazonia region and also what's going to happen to the temperatures. And, uh, and there's a risk that uh, that uh, that there would be desertification of the of the of, of the lost uh, rainforest area. And this wouldn't be beneficial for for, for the people of, uh, of Brazil nor for the economy of Brazil. Uh, thank you. Um, Robin Millard from uh, the French news agency AFP. Hi, Robin. Uh, can you hear us? Uh, it's, uh, it's your question now. French news agency AFP. Okay, we'll go on to Efe Antonio Bruto. Robin, if I think you're possibly having some uh, issues, technical issues. Uh, uh, so uh, Efe, the next question to Efe, and then we'll come back to Robin uh, if possible. Thank you, Claire. Good morning. Um, my question is also on the Amazon. When I read the, the, the report, I thought that only parts of Amazonia uh, we're changing from uh, carbon sink to carbon source. Can you clarify if only parts of the whole Amazon has has changed into that? And uh, can you can you tell that uh, the forest fires that happened in in Amazon in the recent years are the main factor for this change? Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Indeed, it's not the whole Amazonia, uh, which is changing. So this is the uh, south uh, western part of the Amazonia, which actually witnessed one of the largest percent of the uh, deforestation. There are other parts of the Amazonia, especially the um, sorry, the uh, the eastern part. So the the western part of the Amazonia still continues to work as as a carbon uh, sink at this point, but uh, we don't know for how long that will continue this way. We are making the measurements there, and keeping uh, track on what is what is happening there. The our uh, forest fires are do have an impact to a certain extent. Are it's not the the major process which which drives the the change. It's the deforestation itself, and forest fires is one of the processes which is are happening either naturally when you have the uh, preferable weather condition and when it becomes too dry. But there's also quite a lot of the artificial fires which are used to clean the land in the region. I could complement that uh, we published. Uh, uh, last spring uh, status of climate report for last year and uh, there we demonstrated that there, there has been record breaking forest fires in amazonian region which were, which were caused by high temperatures and and, and drought so 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 this is uh, and if you look at the most recent ipcc report uh, climate scenarios for that region are indicating that we would uh, see both uh, higher temperatures and uh, less rainfall which 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 is uh, Altogether, uh, enhancing the risk for, 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 for these uh, for, for forest fires. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you. Um, so we have a question in the, in the chat from uh, from Robin Millard of AFP, and then we'll uh, go on to Reuters after that. So the question from AFP is, uh, looking ahead to COP26, in the light of this greenhouse gas bulletin, what must leaders in Glasgow now do, and can they afford to fail? I think that the message from uh, science community has been very clear. Uh, it would be really healthy to be successful in, in mitigation and, 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 and try to reach this low limit of uh, Paris Agreement 1.5. Uh, and the positive news uh, uh, have, have been that, uh, that this has been, uh, at least at the political level, stated by many heads of uh, state, uh, states world, worldwide. Uh, but uh, what is missing is the concrete uh, action and concrete pledges. So, we expect to hear uh, positive news from the, for example, from the G20 meeting, and uh, and, and we expect to hear uh, concrete pledges uh, in Glasgow. So without those, uh, uh, we are not going to reach uh, the Paris uh, limits. Okay, and uh, Emma Farge of Reuters. Good morning. Um, apologies to labor this again. Um, I was hoping Dr. Tarasova could just clarify one last time on, on the sink question. So 2020, that was the first time that part of the Amazon switched from sink to source. And yours is the first data that confirms that. And, and can you just um, give it a, a little bit of detail on how you measure that? Because it seems a bit different from the atmospheric measurements that um, are in the report. Thank you. Uh, we cannot we cannot do the the assessment of the uh, sink in in Amazonia within one year. So that's why we looked at the ten years our uh, measurements, and that sink represents the average for the last ten year. But this is the first time we reported. The assessment is based indeed on the atmospheric measurements. These are the atmospheric measurements which were performed using the aircraft campaigns. So in a particular part of Amazon, there are, there, there are actually four different sites which do the flights like up and down with their aircraft and collect the vertical profile. And then you can see if there is our, a kind of our increasing concentration in the bottom, then it's a sink or well, then it's a source. If it is a decreasing concentration, then it's a sink. So based on those vertical profiles, which were measured in Amazon for the last uh, 10 years, we can deduct that within the last 10 years, on average, it is the source of CO2 in the southeastern part of Amazonia. We could not do it on one year record. We need 10 years of measurements. Thank you. Uh, we have one last question uh, from uh, Jeremy Lange of uh, French Radio, and then I think we should possibly wrap up. Thank you, uh, Jeremy. Yeah, thank you, Claire. A, a very quick one. Um, you, you've been mentioning the the 1.5 uh, targets at the end of the of the century. Uh, we've been hearing from many experts um, this past years that we cannot reach the 1.5 uh, target, that it's too late. And what do you think that the COP should, should still work on this target or, or some kind of uh, reality uh, politics should, 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 should say that, okay, the 1.5 is uh, behind us and now we should work on the, on the two uh, or 2.5, I don't know. Like, what do you think of that? Uh, it, it was clearly demonstrated by IPCC uh, only three years ago that uh, 1.5 would be the best uh, for the welfare of uh, mankind and, and the welfare of the biosphere. And, uh, and, and it was demonstrated also in that report very clearly that uh, if you go to higher temperatures, if you go to two degrees, uh, there would be more negative uh, effects on, on, on us, on human beings and on, on economy. And, and biosphere as well, and if we go beyond that, uh, we would see uh, even even catastrophic uh, impacts on on food production capacity and uh, and sea level rise and, and and several other 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 parameters. So, the more ambitious uh, we are going to be, the better it's for the for the for our welfare, and and also uh, one could say that uh, that we we would suffer economically if we are not able to reach the Paris. Uh, limits. 
and and uh, so so we should do our utmost to to, to reach the slow limit of Paris Agreement. Uh, and if we go beyond those limits, uh, uh, that wouldn't be very very good for the for the global economy nor no for us as human beings. Thank you. And um, we go finally. I guess you have a follow up question uh, from Antonio of the Spanish news agency EFE. Yes, thank you. Um, so um, my question is uh, for Mr. Talas. Uh, you mentioned that uh, we need uh, to change the industrial energy transport system. Uh, you also talk about minor changes for for us as individuals. Can you give us some examples? What do we need to change? Thank you. Thank you. First of all, if we look at the energy systems, uh, uh, the, we, we have now uh, very attractive uh, uh, investment uh, targets like uh, wind and uh, solar energy, and, and also there's a need for additional nuclear energy to be successful in climate uh, mitigation, and uh, and then we can we have also energy saving solutions which are which are needed. In case of uh, transport. Uh, systems we have a uh, growing amount of electric vehicles on the market uh, and, uh, and and one can also use biofuels and, uh, and and there's also development going on to use hydrogen as a, as a fuel and uh, and and then uh, uh, in industry uh, uh, for example in sweden they are developing at the moment uh, ways to produce uh, steel without uh, without causing carbon carbon emissions and uh, and then uh, we as consumers uh, we, are, we are we are we are buying lots of goods uh, which are which are produced uh, based on 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 for example coal fired uh, energy and, and and this kind of everyday consumption is uh, is important and when it comes to diet uh, 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 we we use uh, 70 percent of the global farmland uh, for uh, for feeding cattle and uh, and this is not the optimal way of uh, Using using farmland and uh, this has been part of this uh, deforestation problem and uh, and also we, we produce uh, both methane and uh, nitrous oxide uh, from 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 agriculture so so to uh, favor more more other type of diet than than meat based uh, diets that would be also good for the for the global climate and and of course this deforestation that we have been talking about uh, that's also something important and and this is especially Problem in re non-renewable uh, forests in in in, uh, in in Latin America, in in Africa, and also some parts of Asia. Before we finish, just one clarification requested by AFP. Um, so globally, Amazonia is still a sink. Is that right? Yeah, I would take the whole Amazonia as the, the whole the scene that it is a sink, but its capacity is substantially reduced. With that, um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you to everybody, to all the journalists for joining us. Thank you to Professor Talas and Dr. Arasova. Um, and a big thanks, uh, as always, to UN Television. Uh, WMO will be releasing the provisional statement on the status of the climate in 2021. Uh, we'll be doing that on Sunday, the 31st of October in COP, uh, at COP in Glasgow. Um, so I will send you more details of that in due course. So thanks very much again, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>